Hello and welcome. How are you all doing? Didn't think there was going to be a stream today, but here I am. Uh, it's just going to be like a quick stream for the next hour or two. Um, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, I'm all good, thank you. Right, so. Um, I was thinking of building uh, Mycinius uh, this evening, but I'm going to try building some of the Sky Hunters uh, instead. Because I could, I could build Mycinius and that would be pretty much it. Um, but what we'll do is we'll try and build at least uh, one Sky Hunter. So, um, uh, I received these during the week. It was a bit annoying because obviously I wanted them last week, Saturday, but they're extremely um, popular kit. I think they're sold out. Uh, so, oh, just a little disclaimer. I'm not going to magnetize any of these. Um, you know, you can do, and I would suggest that you do um, magnetize the front of them. We'll see. We'll see how far we get, and we'll see, um, you know, if that's relatively straightforward and, and more importantly we'll see if i've got the the magnets for it because that's what it boils down to whether super has the magnets okay let's uh, let's crack on then so a lovely kit um wish i had the time early in the week to uh to build them you know, like Wednesday, but so A two and A one. As always, uh, put in the comments below what you're working on or what you have been working on, whether that is actually Warhammer, whether you're painting or building. A3. I kind of think it's that piece, but it's not. It's this piece. And this is where the... Uh, Vent is right at the front. Uh, seems like a nice kit. Fair number of parts as well. Um, this is these are kind of what I'll be building during the week alongside the alongside Mycinius, of course. A6 and A7. Oh, Kriegsman, how are you doing? A5. I always start streaming and I get very, very warm. Looks like a barrel, really. An A9, which is this cool looking piece. Oh, nice one, sounds good. And um, we'll do the uh, sort of blades in a a little bit. Maybe this uh, lamp about.
yeah, I, th I think we're going to have some more Horus Heresy um, releases soon. You know, other than these, we haven't really had uh, had many. Bear with me. It always happens. A moment I start the, start the camera rolling. The heat just goes up. Very warm. I don't think it's anything to do with the light. The light doesn't really hit, you know, emit any heat at all. Hello Michael, how are you doing? Hello Christoph, how are you? Were you able to sort out uh, your Horus? Because uh, I think I live streamed last weekend, did I? Sure I did. Yeah, no, fair enough. I know the feeling. I know the feeling. This is the thing, like, um, I've just been doing a lot of exercise and things uh, recently. And uh, I started off all right, but now... Coming to uh, Saturday evening, I am absolutely bushed after this week. Absolutely. Um, been the best release so far in terms of what Heresy needed. Yeah, nice one. I think they were going to concentrate on these kind of things, like the vehicles and tanks, first. I think that's what they said. Yeah, I'm hoping you, you get this kit, Craig. It's a nice kit. You know, typically with like bike kits and things for Space Marines, I've always felt a bit, a bit shortchanged. Um, whereas this kit, I don't. This is like the first kit. I mean, even with the Eldar, the Eldar ones aren't particularly, you know, incredible. They're nice sculpts, don't get me wrong. But like the kit itself,
Uh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, you're doing your own Sky Hunter squad. Nice one. Uh, you got a Raven, Raven Wing upgrade sprue. A Raven Wing upgrade sprue. What from Games Workshop? So that'll be for. That'll be for 40k then, won't it? The Raven Wing upgrade set, I think. I mean, they definitely have they definitely have weak different wings, don't they, for Horus Heresy? But I'm intrigued. Um, been busy in real life. Yeah, I've been busy in real life. Uh, sounds like everyone else has been busy in real life. Oh, I've been busy in the, the channel as well, you know. Um, there's, there's a little kind of hiatus of the uh, Imperium uh, videos while we cover these, uh, these new releases. I know people are, are, are waiting for the Horus uh, Lupercal review and waiting for Angron review and things like that, but... Um, you know they are they are on their way they are on their way um let me just move him over here actually let's put him there why not uh yeah christoph i haven't um got the hairdryer out yet for uh the looper cow um hi sampler how you doing Video games as well this week. There's been a lot going on for video games. Um, Gran Turismo 7 got an update. Um, quite a nice update with a nice new track. I've uh, been testing that out. An Ace Combat came out uh, on like PlayStation Plus or whatever. I played it before and I've completed it on the, the Xbox, but there's just something about it, something about Ace Combat I really, really like. Uh, it, it desperately needs like a PlayStation 5 upgrade though, desperately. It would be so cool if it got that, but I doubt it. It's uh, Bandai, isn't it? They're not really up on do next gen kind of updates and things. Even if they just like had a patch for like a performance mode or a increased resolution mode, so just something would be would be awesome. I mean, I guess they could have timed it with uh, Top Gun release last year, but I mean, they brought out DLC for it, so Yeah, so not a full three hour live stream tonight. Um, I've actually been thinking about cutting down the the hours of the live stream from three. Um, it's just the app and everything on here. Just YouTube have just made it worse, like way worse. Um, they've really scaled it down. Uh, I, I don't know why they have. It's bizarre because when I um, delete it and then download it again, it's the older version, which is better. They, they've updated it and they've taken loads of features out. It, 
it's and it's to their own detriment as well um because there's like monetization features that they've uh, removed which is yeah really really odd i just don't, don't understand why why big companies do things like this and then and then don't test them <laughs> i mean they they obviously pay people to test things you know that's what i don't get So this is why sometimes I feel it's deliberate. But why? Like, why would it be deliberate to, to push people away from doing this kind of live stream stuff? Really bizarre. Some of these big companies nowadays doing things to, doing things on purpose to just push people away from them. It's, it's, ah, oh, very, very, very odd. Yeah, please do put in the comments what you're working on. If you're painting, if you're building. You know, these three uh, Sky Hunters, they'll be for my Dark Angels. Um, I'm definitely going to get at least six more. Uh, specifically just for Dark Angels, I think. Um, so I'd have nine, which would be nice. I can't. I can't foresee my, me getting any more than that. If I was, I'd probably get like three for Emperor's Children and call it a day. Um, I wouldn't get any for Death Guard or Word Bearers or um, Imperial Fists. I, I just wouldn't, you know. These would be purely for, for Dark Angels and Emperor's Children. These would be... Oh, nice one, Michael. Nice one. Sounds good. I need to get one more support tank. And then that's the collection done for support tanks. But I need to get four more uh, just predators. And then that's that's the Dark Angels done. I, I don't know whether I'll I'll pick up any or what I would pick up for the other legions. This is a thing like for for the other legions, it's going to be of very bare bones, like enough to make uh, an an all right sort of two thousand point army or so. Um, but I'm certainly not going to have a huge army. And the thing about having multiple units for Dark Angels is. They probably won't have that many markings on, so I can kind of get away with using them in 40k and uh, for Raven Guard. Maybe even Iron Hands. I don't know. Maybe. Um, Yeah, no worries, Sampler, no worries. That's all good. Thanks for sharing. That's cool. That sounds cool. You know. Apologies for being a bit late today. Uh, I, I was debating whether or not to, to actually live stream. Um, but I'd managed to, you know, finish the things I needed to do. And um, thought I'd come on, on here. So thank you for your, your presence and company. As always, it's always cool doing hobbying with with everyone else that enjoys enjoys the hobby. I'm a bit low on energy this evening. Um, Oh, nice one, Christoph. That sounds really cool. Don't know what which legion will get them. Oh, okay, cool, cool. 
Uh, gluing it was a nightmare. What, gluing the um, Predator, really? Why was it a nightmare? What was what what went wrong with it? I didn't, I I've never really had much issues with those predators. Uh, the Venator looks nice. The Sakaran, I mean it would. The plastic Sakaran looks looks great. So, um, oh nice one, Victor. Nice one. Thanks for sharing. That sounds awesome. Thousand Suns. Leviathan, Dreadnought. Yeah, I'm not. Well, I'm not really a big fan of the news of the the Contemptors, though. You know, with the the resin um, torsos. I've been very vocal on the subject, anyway. But um, that's me. I can be. It's quite refreshing, really. You get so many other channels that. You know, other channels may not be openly uh, positive about certain things, but they're definitely not openly negative. Um, you know. Is it like a, I don't know what term I'd use it, like a an exchange of positivity? Like you get free stuff and you get it early to only say good things? Is it a positivity exchange? Hmm, I don't know about these bases. I mean, I think you clip both of these things off. I'm quite sure you do. Uh, my favorite 40K model release this year. What, in 2023? I only had two two months, Michael. I only had two months. Unless you're counting the year from like now all the way back to February of 2022. Or maybe you're just counting 2022. But it's a really good question. I don't think I've bought that much uh, 40K, but if I, if I was going to say last year, it's, it's known knowledge that it was the Avatar was my favorite one last year. Uh, this this year though, well, I I guess I've I've liked Angron so far, but I haven't really bought that many forty k models. I'm I'm ho holding out for the Berserkers when they come out in um in the Combat Patrol, which I will be picking up, guys. I will definitely just when Games Workshop, you know, decide to to do that. I'm hoping it's next week, so it's not too far from the main release of World Eaters. That would be that would be cool. If they going to workshop turn around and say, right, we've got the World Eaters and we've got both of the Horus Heresy um, tanks, you know, the Cerberus and the Typhon next weekend, I, I will be a very happy boy. Um, yeah, exactly, Christoph. Yeah, the the new plastic um, uh, Rhino chassis it, it does fit quite nicely. Um, I, I think it. Fits nicer than the the previous one, and and the and the Land Raider as well. Definitely, I totally agree. And um, you had to trim a lot off the floor because it was too thick. Really, that is that is interesting. That is interesting. But so so like the floor, the base of the tank was a bit too thick. Normally, I'm I'm a big fan of like thick things, but um, but definitely not when it comes to uh, you know model wise when it shouldn't be shouldn't be that thick. Yeah, makes um, fitting both the sides uh, of the tank um, a nightmare, as you say. I always find like the back door, that ramp on the new Rhino chassis. I don't know if Christoph agrees with me here, but um, I always find that that is uh, that is a nightmare, <laughs> as you've seen in in the uh, the live streams probably of me. Um, building one. Give this a little bit of a squeeze. Um. <laughs> maybe, maybe Michael, like I've got some of the newer, um, I say newer, they're all kind of built, you know, produced in 2022, but um, I'll have a look at one of my newer boxes of the, um, the Predators. 
and see if it's like a, a batch issue. Maybe it just had a batch where the injection mold just had that base um, a bit too thick. Uh, maybe, who knows? Um, I started playing Death Stranding as well. So many people said, oh, you know, it's like a delivery simulator. It's a walking simulator, things like that. I'm actually really enjoying it. <laughs> but then again, I, I've really loved uh, Hideo Kojima's work and stuff. So, you know, of course I would enjoy Death Stranding, even if you just walk about delivering things like, you know, and Norman, Norman Reedus is just, he's just a super cool guy, isn't he? You know, rides a motorbike awesome oh i reckon he'd just be a really cool guy just to chill out with have a beer with um yeah he's got a really cool accent too i know i'm gushing i know i know i'm gushing about a guy but you know um he just seems really quite a nice chap right i think this goes as here yeah that should be there yeah. Uh. <laughs> the back ramp is quite a squeeze, yep. It certainly is. Yeah, yeah, you definitely have to trim down the, the rods on the on that back ramp on it. Uh I have no idea. I think they go on like that, possibly. Does it matter which way they go on? Well, you either put the two two rings on the so two rings on the bottom. So we're we're going to have it match matching. So those are the two rings on the bottom. Probably easier if we do it this way. So likewise, we'll have two two rings at the bottom, which I've I've got there. Again, more and more, I'm, I've been hobbying recently. I, I've found the need of of only one of those octopus things that holds the pieces uh, in check. Um, what is it called? Like a tool? Tool clamp? No. I, I need to look at it on um, Games Workshop's web store, but. Uh, back doors were glued strictly, strictly come gluing. <laughs> yeah, me too, guys, yeah. Um, I, I didn't glue the, um, the back doors of my original rhinos, no. Um, there, there was detail inside of the original ones, yeah. It's pretty much the same detail, really. Uh, would raven wings be good for raven wing conversion? Well, what what parts do you have? I don't know what parts you have. Um, I guess so. I mean, if you've got some Dark Angel uh, parts and things, then yeah. I think you could have them on, on that. Uh, so Someone said on the comments, though, on the unboxing, um, a very useful comment, actually, uh, about how I think the kit doesn't come with a power fist. And um, that's one of the war gear options. So, yeah, just just bear that in mind. That if you were after that, so that doesn't actually go on there very well. <laughs> really doesn't go on there very well. Oh, nice one. 
rogue trader rhinos. Really? Building the rogue trader rhinos. Well, that's before my time. Way before. I don't know, when was that? Like 40 years ago? Over 40 years ago? I don't know. Um, wow, from 40 years, that's crazy. Good on you, good on you. I wasn't even looking for them back in the, the 90s. Well, but then again, I probably didn't have an appreciation for, you know, the models as, as much as I do now, but. Um, the smooth custodian jet bikes. Yeah, they do, they are very similar, but they're, they're also very similar to the, the resin ones that were, that were already out. Ah, got you. Okay, so you have to kind of like push it down and then up, as is usually the case. So you can't just lay this on top. You've got to have a bit of a technique. Push it in and then up, and then it will fit on there quite nicely. Excellent. Um, oh, we've got this to put on as well. see a lot of join lines and I, I still have not picked up uh, an extra set of um, Tamiya. I know I'm terrible, right? I'm really, really bad, I know. But, uh, well, Tamiya extra thin, because I've run out. I find that along with filing are uh, two decent techniques to remove gaps. Although with these new Horus Heresy kits, it's the tolerances are so strong and high that you know it's very rare that you'll get gaps and mold lines well gaps anyway. Mold lines, I don't know. Oh, nice one. Oh, that's really cool. Uh, hi, Fog. How are you doing? Nice to see you. I haven't seen you for ages. What have you been up to? Still on your uh, Astra Militarum or your guard? I'm sure you usually um, are working on them. Sampler's working on it's like thousands of Space Marines. Christoph's just working on loads of cool miniatures and lots of them and the Primarchs and things and Fog, I'm sure you, you work on your, your guard I'm sure you do Ah, so 14 Now, this is a question, right? Out of all the science fiction things out there what, what are the coolest jet bikes? You know, I mean, I do, I do like the old um, Star Wars jet bikes, you know, the speeders. I do like them. All these years without what without the um the glue i know i know i'll, I'll get them um, don't you worry i'll get like uh i wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat because i'm just thinking about the gaps in in miniatures and things like that don't you worry 
like every every time I go to buy some Tamiya, like um, it's either out of stock or there's like two pots for like fourteen pounds, which I mean I know the you know prices are going up and things, but he says while well, you know building like a thirty pound kit or whatever it is. And to be fair, they do, they do last a while, you know, <laughs> unless you accidentally leave the screw cap off um, slightly and then, yeah, <laughs> the next morning you're struggling to breathe and also all your tummy is uh, evaporated. Uh, oh, nice one. Yeah, you are. Oh, cool. Nice one. Um, Is there any other jet bikes other than Star Wars? Well, these these for one. Um, I'm sure there's been a few other sci science fiction uh, programs with with some kind of jet bike or speeder. Does cyberpunk? Cyberpunk doesn't, doesn't have anti-grav, do they? I don't think. Why am I, I'm now thinking of some kind of like Mad Max Blade Runner crossover now in my head going on. Hmm. <laughs> you like using Loctite. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, no. It's a, it's a mountain of grey. We're calling it the grey mountain from now on. All right. I'm going to scale the grey mountain. That's the new, that's the new uh, term. Those creatives at Games Workshop have coined it the grey mountain. What's the altitude of your grey mountain? It's... What's, what's the altitude of your light grey mountain? For resin, you know, well, it's two warlords high and <laughs> three nemesis is wide <laughs> at its at its thickest point. I don't know. My grey mountain is um, six thunderhawks nose to nose to tail high. Yeah, where are the bikes then, Moxitron? Where are the bikes? Like, if it's just the cars... Oh. Maybe they don't have bikes because the air quality is just... pretty, pretty awful in... Blade Runner. Well, it looks it looks not ideal. But yeah. Uh, Netflix took down both of Blade Runners. Oh, oh! If you hate that, well, you're gonna hate when they uh, limit you to. Uh, only be able to use it from one IP address. Wow, so many people are gonna quit because of that. It's, uh, you know, I always think of like, the people that are on the move that like travel um, and they want a bit of downtime uh, or truckers, you know, like different people have different jobs and you know, the, they go everywhere. And I just think it's, mm, I don't know. I. I that I think people go elsewhere. Uh, you know, I don't think people go without um, their downtime and consuming media. I think they'll just consume it from other places. Um, you know, because some people just don't like reading books. Like, and I get that. You know, you just want to. You know, uh, is it like um, bubble gum for the for the mind? Like, you just you just you know you you worked hard, you travelled, and you just want to 
chill out. Um, you know, watch something like be, be passive rather than than active. You know, if you've been active all day, I guess. Anyway, um, <laughs> you have a grey Everest to climb. No way. Wow. Me too. Me too. It's fine. You know why it's fine? Because next month there's a price increase. So all of that, that grey mountain you have in your room or in your house or in your garage, <laughs> you, uh, it, it's still going to be there. But without you doing anything, it's going to go up in value. <laughs> so it's, it's not too bad. Your, your mountain will be worth more next month. Oh yeah, for sure, definitely. Um, <laughs> Hello Roussel, how are you doing? Uh, you've been pricing out a Titan Mana for what, what, a uh, plastic one? Or a, or a resin one? Books, looks at bookshelf full of games for <laughs> short books. <laughs> yeah, this is the thing, and those books, right, they add up, don't they? Um, obviously I'll receive a few books today and, you know, it, I'm being very, very like basic here with, with the maths, but you know, you only have to look at like 20 books. And if you've paid like 20 pound each for them, that's like 400 pounds. It's like, you know, you look, you look at a pile of 20 books or 20 books on a bookshelf. And if you have paid 18, 20 pound for them, that's, that's almost a Titan on books, you know? But, you know, again, it's a hobby if you enjoy reading, if you enjoy the lore, if you enjoy the stories. I mean, as I've always said, like, you know, Warhammer 40k, or like, well, Horus Heresy, mainly my favourite science fiction uh, universe. So, you know, it, it's escapism, isn't it? It takes you to, to places. And if you've got a good imagination, um, you know, reading can take you to, to different worlds. And, you know, your own imagination is, is your... Is your limit, I guess, in building those pictures up from <laughs> an arrangement of symbols on a, you know, <laughs> on a piece of paper. It's, it's, it's incredible when you think about it. Yeah, the written word. We did well with that one, didn't we? Still going strong now as I'm reading your comments. <laughs> yeah. Still, everyone struggles to communicate with each other. Still, after all these years, Hello, me, PSH. Doing well, thanks. How are you doing? Uh, you finally finished your Age of Darkness book, uh, box set. Oh, nice one. Nice one, Gaz. Good to hear. Yeah, the Mark IVs, they're a bit small. They are a bit small in stature. I mean, yeah. I am biased. Mark III's are my favourite. You know. Oh, I'd love it if they brought out some Mark IIs. Come on. Come on, Games Workshop. Make it happen. I don't know. Is that what people want? I think that would be cool. 
I would love that personally. Like I, I would love them to bring out plastic Mark IIs because then with the Crusade armor, you could actually, instead of fighting each other, <laughs> space Marine on space Marine, I don't know, maybe people could club together and fight orcs <laughs> or they could, they could create some of the horrific alien races. Um, that they that they encountered in the Horus Heresy. I'd rather that happen than the scouring. I, I really would. I'd rather we go on this big crusade to, um, you know, liberate the galaxy. And then we can all use our brand new Emperor models as well in game. <laughs> like turn three, the Emperor turns up. On a one plus on the roll of the dice, you win. <laughs> yeah, reading reading is is amazing. It really is. Um... <laughs> oh yeah, definitely, definitely, Fog. I'm totally with you there. Definitely, totally agree. Um, you would like you to show your Orc Commando boss sculpt that you made. Yeah, that'd be cool. Put it in the Discord, uh, Russell. Russell. If you can. Mark II Space Marines. Yes, please. Yes. That would be, that would be very, very cool. I mean, I think this goes on like that. Now, are these things called aerofoils? I don't know. Or flaps. Or are these parts called flaps and these are the aerofoils? I don't know. Uh, what we already want is Leagues of Votan. Hmm. Not sure if serious. <laughs> I think I think all we want is better rules for them, right? Or we want previous rules for them, maybe. It's probably more appropriate, isn't it? Can we have our rules back for Votan? Where they just annihilated everything. Okay, weapon time. What should we go for? Let's just go for all of them. Let's just clip all of them off. And, uh, and I'll show you them. job will be a manacle no it's absolutely they're absolutely fine thank you my fingers I think uh, I get a load of nice compliments actually so but if you're offering or, or if you're offering to pay then um, I'm not gonna say no just uh, you know you you can easily send me a, a manicure voucher you'd be very kind to do so um, you know I mean this channel pretty much is only hands isn't it um, they do get a lot of airtime, but uh, yeah, no, I I cut them today. Um, or was it yesterday? No, I think it was today. I cut them. It's a 
surprised how quick they uh, they grow though. Pretty good. All right. Um, what you want is a guard to go back to the platoon system. Okay, yeah. That sounds good. Ah, uh, 24. Is this uh, 24 and 25? Wow. So it's just a two, two piece piece, this one. And we're not going to use. Uh, Say the traitor kind of symbol. We'll use this uh, this eagle. Um, this is actually it's not taking me as long as I expected it to take, which is a nice surprise. Um, uh, there is plasma heavy. Plas, plas, what? No, 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 fog. Um, there's a plasma, heavy bolter, uh, a multi melter, and a volkite. So there's no last cannons, no. Um, uh, <laughs> okay, so Bob's, um, is this a resin kit? Uh, no, it's a, it's a plastic kit. Uh, it came out like a week ago. Um, but I received it during the week, um, hence why I'm doing the uh, the build now, A18 and A17. Uh, I misread your comment. Um, what, what I want is guard to go back to the platoon system. Huh. What? I think, or, or is it a different comment? Oh, I want new Terminators. Was it that comment? I can't remember. Okay. So 15, it's gonna go the other side after we put this together with, ah, oh, okay. I don't know where these, um, Triggers go. Seventeen. So that's those two. And uh, then nineteen and sixteen is the. So we've um, got through this sprue relatively quickly, in about an hour. So no doubt, probably, you guys would probably, you, you know, you guys would rinse this sprue within half an hour because you're not, you're not chatting like I do. And then it's just uh, time to put the space moon on. Don't think we put the uh, triggers on. Twenty nine and twenty eight. I think those triggers are just for the. Yeah, we put them on after we've put the uh, Space Marine on himself. Okay, um, let's not take them off just yet. Let's put these weapons together. Um, I misread that comment. Uh, that comment, I don't know, I can't remember which comment it was now. Oh, my next job will be manicure. I get it now. Ah, oh, thanks, Fog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So my next job is to manic, you know, to actually perform manicures. Got it. Thank you. Now I get it. I thought you meant as in my next job would be to get a manicure myself, but no, I, I, it doesn't freak me out at all. I mean, you know, People come in all shapes and sizes in terms of like their feet and their fingers. I mean, you know, you know, you've got what you've got, but I, I don't think I could do that as a job. I don't think I could touch other people's fingers and and uh, 
feet. Um, credit to the, the people that do, but no, I, that's not my, my cup of tea. Um, I, I wouldn't get a buzz out of that. I wouldn't finish work feeling fulfilled. Um, you know, but that's just me. I know other people do and other people can see the, um, the joy and relief and, you know, the, the pleasure at making other people look and feel amazing. But for me, it just, for me, I, I can't, for me. Um, maybe because if I do it to myself, like if I manicure my, myself, like I don't get that, that buzz from making myself look, you know, look good in terms of fingers and feet and things. So I, I'm certainly not going to get that from uh, helping other people. I'd rather help people in other ways. Um, but I, <laughs> and again, like, sometimes I feel like a dentist um, with all this fine work. Uh, you know, similar kind of LED lamp. Um, you know, I scrape a lot of things. I, I file, I, you know. Uh, but then there's the fact that those things that you would do that to are in other people's mouths and you have to get them, they have to trust you and you have to go all the way into their mouths without them, yeah, biting your arm off, I guess, um, and, and doing those things. And yeah, I, again, hats off to dentists, really. Just, you guys are awesome. Just... But then in nature, there, there are also dentists as well, aren't there? Like there are little fish that come and um, clean bigger fish's uh, skin and teeth. And, you know, so even in nature, they have uh, dentists in, in a way. I mean, you're never going to see a, a fish perform a uh, filling, are you? But still... What can cause cavities in the ocean is my next question. I mean, there certainly aren't any, isn't any chocolate or sugary drinks or anything, is there? So, well, I guess there's still bacteria, like there's bacteria everywhere. Uh, oh, nice one, me. Nice one. That sounds good. Um, glad you're enjoying them. Uh, the only thing you dislike about this kit is you have to take one of the two symbols. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Good point, Christoph. Thank you for that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, could you 3D print a symbol? Could you 3D print a symbol like that? But 3D print like a Raven Guard bit and pop it on. You know? Is that an option? I mean, yeah, I still would prefer it to be smooth and then you either leave it as smooth or, um, you know, customize it yourself, you know? Yeah, 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 thank you. <laughs> Shouldn't I give a trigger warning? I'll give you a trigger warning about triggers, yeah. <laughs> this video should come with a trigger warning. No, building all the world eaters definitely should. Whoa. Those live streams and review videos and things, they they, they get me angry. <laughs> uh, that's all right, Bob. Um, you're out of the hobby for about five years. All right. Some of the kits are like 12 years old or 14 years. Oh, oh, 14 years. Okay. Glad to hear that you uh, prefer it smooth. Yep. It's... Uh... I mean, there are some ribbed um, 
uh, section on, 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 the, on the top, but right. Uh, we'll just uh, glue these together. And then we'll file them because sometimes it's better if you just place them together. It's nice to see them in plastic because they're out of your price range. That that's really odd. It's really odd that like a, uh, how much were they like thirty pounds when they first came out or something? So thirty pound resin miniature, out of your price range, but eighty pound books aren't. That's really, yeah, and because they were out of your price range, that must mean that pretty much everything in Horus Heresy was out of your price range. That's. Yeah, I, I, I just, I don't know, I, I would, um, I'd save, I'd work more, I'd, you know, it's, it's expensive, you know, it really is expensive, um, you know, but if you can afford uh, the books, yeah, you can afford, um, like a jet bike or whatever, um, but I guess now you get to get these jet bikes cheaper. Uh, but they will take you much longer to build. So they'll use up more of your more of your resource. More of your most important resource as well, the time. Detail-wise, I don't think there's much in it. Like, I don't have any of these resin ones. And that's not because they were out of my price range. God, imagine that. I've already had backlash for saying some things are, are too expensive. Um, I don't think I can ever say any of this is out of my price range. I can disagree with the price, of course. Um, if I don't think it offers value in things. I mean, take, take Macinius for one, like today. I did the unboxing of him. He's £24. He's £2 more expensive than the Word Bearer's Resin Praetor, which is a way, way better model. Um, so I would also be careful what you wish for. Like, you know, the, the you may get things in plastic, but they're always going to take you longer. And most likely have less detail the tanks and the jet bikes no but angron definitely you know if we had that angron model in resin yeah it would be 300 pound but it could be way bigger and undoubtedly it'd have more more detail now this isn't going into a debate or or anything like that about which is better you know i've got resin and plastic um i've got a lot of resin but I've got more plastic. Um, they just they just offer different things, different sides of the hobby, I think. Um, but no, it's not quite as clear cut as, oh, this is better than that. Um, because like I say, the example of the price range thing. Um, yeah, it may be cheaper, but you lose out in other in other places. Um, uh, yeah, if you mean the tank, say the tanks, Gaz. Bob, Bob, you were replying to Bob's um, comment and he didn't say anything about tanks. He was just talking about the Horus Heresy kits. Um, you just noticed that that is Angron. Yeah, big red, say big red, <laughs> big, um, Angry uh, Primark there, and that over there is Horace Lupagal, right over there. Well, he's the ascended model anyway. He's apparently he's like ten times bigger than the uh, 
previous version. <laughs> He's not. Yeah, I'll be staying on here until about 10 o'clock. Um, so not quite the three hours tonight, but I uh, decided to come on anyway. Despite me not picking up the um, Space Marines next weekend, I will be back next weekend too. And I know I said I'd be back on the Wednesday um, to do the uh, Thunderhawk, but I, I still I still will do the Thunderhawk. So yeah, new Angron is is uh, it's nice. I prefer Mortarian though. I really do. I much prefer Mortarian. Um, uh, uh, that's a few it's an odd way of putting a question. Okay, let me, okay, so okay, and then let me, and then ask you, ask you, ask you then, so there's another, so there's like an okay, and then a let me, and then a um, then, uh, so it's like quite a, you know, boom, boom, boom. Um, do you see them making plastic weapons for the Forge World Imperial Titans? For the Forge World Imperial Titans. I don't know whether that's a trick question, because they already do. Um, they they do and they they do and they don't. So it's a bit of both. They make Forge World weapons for the plastic Imperial Titans for the Adeptus Mecha Adeptus Titanicus. But if you mean like the big full resin uh, kits, um, no, I I don't see them making weapons. Uh, in, in plastic for them. Um, put, put it this way, what's the biggest plastic kit Games Workshop make? If you don't know, it's it's a shame to be part of the debate really. Um, if you come into this, this debate like that, um, it really pays to know which is the biggest model in plastic. So have a guess, Fog. Well, have a guess if you don't know, um, but I'd rather you, I'd rather you did know. And then we can kind of go from there, really, and discuss how how plausible it would be. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm. I was getting there. I was getting to the uh, the, the big ones. Orc Gargan. No, no. Way off. Archeon. <laughs> Archeon's the biggest biggest model. It's absolutely huge. Archeon. In terms of like height and wingspan and all the rest of it. Um, Bane Blade, no. Imperial Knights, no. Gargant's big, yeah. Uh, so the, the Gargant? The Stomper, you mean? The Stomper. Stomper is a big one. Stomper's big and Archeon's big. Um, the, the thing is, though, is it all boils down to, to price. And I always... The biggest whiners in this community are Americans and Australians. And I kind of understand that in a way, um, because your prices, guys, are just, they're just, I wouldn't be in the hobby. Like, I'm with you on that. I just, there's no way I would be in the hobby uh, if I had to pay what you guys have to pay. Um, you know. But it boils down to that. How much would it, would it be? How much would, would it cost um, for a, a weapon because I tell you what at the moment how much is a, a warlord weapon is it like a hundred pound now it it breached the hundred pound um, point didn't it like in the past year or so I don't see how a plastic version would be half that price like I really don't um, I go back to this 24 pound Word bearers, Praetor, cheaper. So 
what they're what they're doing is yes they are i mean look at angron almost a hundred pound for that 95 pounds um it if they did do it the price would be high you know and they'll tell you why the price would be high is because they they get more profit there's a bigger profit margin than if they were to um make the resin molds uh i say a bigger profit margin like towards the end of the cycle it is not the initial startup because the initial startup they have to um uh design and and make those injection molds which can be hundreds of thousands of, of pounds you know um but they last for a very very long time whereas the resin ones there's a there's a smaller startup cost and so i would say they get their profit quicker another factor in in the answer to your question is how many resin weapons do the titans have at the moment and are they are they releasing them regularly i'll answer that they're not if they were and they were popular and they were selling in in resin there'd be more of a chance of them producing them in plastic look at all of this horus heresy we've only got these plastic jet bikes we've only got um uh the plastic spartan and all of the new plastic horus heresy models that are coming out because people have bought them in resin <laughs> like that's that's a thing that i don't think most people understand is that we've only got all of this because it's been so popular in resin um it's just too much of a of a uh, a gamble too much of a risk to have released horus heresy in plastic with n none of the kind of profits and the um success that it was before they they just would not do it games workshop have become less risk averse over the years definitely ever since i'd probably say like 2016 2015 um since change of of management and things um you know but they're still they're still not fully committed in some regards this horus heresy last year was a big big turning point for them you know I, i'm not counting ninth edition i'm not counting age of sigmar um because that's tried and tested that's been out before it's 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 a cash cow it's more it's more of the same but horus heresy last year was was a big big risk for them um to release it in plastic and again they would never have done it without uh all of the sales of the resin kits um I mean, look at Adeptus Titanicus, look at Blood Bowl, look at uh, Necromunda. Yes, they've released um, their main kits in plastic, but they haven't fully, fully committed. You know, they haven't released all of those models in plastic. You know, um, they've released a lot through Forge World uh, because they're, you know, they don't think that they're going to recoup their, their costs long term in those game systems which really puzzles me because they know how many um like forge world warlords they've they've made they know how many uh, uh reavers they've made so it stands to reason that a lot of those customers are crying out for for new weapons for new resin weapons and this is another part of my answer like, it's like a three-parter i guess is the people that have already bought those type the people that have already spent one and a half thousand pounds on their warlord titan they're not going to be bothered <laughs> whether their weapons are in plastic or resin they really aren't they are i mean as a titan owner myself um i'd much rather it be in resin because these models are big um showcases anyway with a lot of detail and you'd get a lot uh on the um the resin weapons for them but also the weight you know um there's not a need for them to be plastic to you know because they're heavy pieces anyway now a different form of resin like a lighter resin 
if they're able to do that for a war master, hypothetically speaking, that is potential. They, they could make some of the parts on the top that don't require uh, a lot of detail um, to be plastic. You know, I'm not ruling that out. But for the main body, and, and also the, the unsurety of how much it will sell, because if they're going to sell a War Master for 3000 minimum, then, um, yeah, there's no guarantee that they're going to sell many. Um, even more of a reason why they, they put it in, uh, in resin. But what I'd like to see is, where are the different variants of the current Warlord kit from, from Forge World? Like, where's the Chaos variant? Where's the Psy Titan? You know, they, they made the resin, uh, I'd say upgrade, part sprues uh, for, for the Psy Titan, for Adeptus Titanicus. So wh where's, where's that? I'd love to see that. That'd be, that'd be really cool. Um, and I'd like to see the weapons that they've all, also released. Uh, from Forge World. Hopefully we'll get them. Hopefully we will. Anyway, run over. <laughs> I hope that's uh, kind of answered your question a little bit. Okay. Oops. So we're joining these two together. Side Titan, yes, definitely Side Titan. You know, Side Titan would be the thing that uh, gets me the um, third uh, third Titan, third Warlord. I don't mind the the Warlord Titan. Um, both that and the Nemesis are, are fine to put together. I still would rather put together a uh, Thunderhawk, of course. Speaking of which. So yeah, I'll probably build Mycenaeus at um, some point this week. you get a review of him quite soon. I don't want to leave that out too long. I like how this, um, the rear this jet bike goes together. It's quite cool. Okay. Like so. Um Right, so if we, I think that's just gonna go. Oh, that's that's nice. Yeah, I like that. That that's very cool. That's cool. No, you're right, Christoph. For the side titan, uh, just a new head, which would be about sixty pound, I think, something like that. Um, the new weapon, what's that like a hundred or so, maybe a little bit more, and then the 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 top, um carapace thing that goes over the void shields that's all they need to do maybe have like a little upgrade sprue like maybe um have some really cool uh looking moderati with like blank helmets and things that would oh that'd be really really good wouldn't it um overall like a warlord titan upgrade kit uh with the carapace thing i would the carapace thing might be a bit big though i would probably say you're looking at I'd be very conservative in this, 250 pound minimum, 250 pound. Uh, and then you could, and you, you could buy that 
as, a, as like a kit for those three items, £250, or um, you could just buy Warlord Titan and they, they do some kind of bundle where you, where you get that. Uh, I think that would be all right. But if they bought, if they sold it as a kit and they created it so that you can just, I don't know, magnetize the head like I have, magnetize the weapon and um, either magnetize or gently place the um, carapace over the top of it, um, then, you, you know, that would encourage existing Warlord Titan owners uh, to just, just pick up that set because there were rules for it. Um, there were rules for the uh, Psy Warlord Titan in the um, Horus Heresy books. And that's another thing about this, this plastic edition though. Unfortunately, not everything carried over, which is a real shame. Um, you know, we, we had a few casualties um, with moving this over. No. Be nice to use the the old cast castellum, castellum, cast fel. What's the word called? Cast ferum. Is that the one? The old boxy dreadnoughts. So you could use those instead of um, contemptors. I'm not sure why you'd pick any other dreadnought of contemptor though, but. Keep forgetting that I haven't glued that on yet. It's like, oh, this is wobbly. Yes, it is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, totally agree, Fog. Yeah. I know, right, Christoph? I know. And I reckon that there's going to be a fair few new Titan owners um, over over this next month. You know, with the announcement of the price increase, I think uh, quite a few people have jumped on on board picking up a, a Titan or two because you know the big big price increase. Um, so <laughs> would have been a great time straight after the price increase to then release a load of new. Titan weapons, not not because they'd make more money because of because of the increase, but just because um, there'd be more owners of them. That's what I was looking at. I mean, it's it's not like they need to maximise on it, but yeah. Okay, so that's sort of done. We'll put this eagle on. And then we can concentrate on the uh, space marine. Um, I'm not going to fit the weapons in. You... You can magnetize them. Uh, the way I would do that though, is um, I would drill a hole there and then drill a hole underneath. And then that magnet would, would go um, underneath the, the hole and then that, that, that would hold it and that would be fine. Um, but yeah, you, you're not gonna get away with not magnetizing them. I mean, I suppose you could just put a little blue tack in there or something, but um, yeah. Uh, that's definitely worth doing um, if you wanted to use your, you know, if you, if you only wanted like six of them or so, uh, that gives you loads of options by keeping these handy. But, you know, the thing about magnetizing is you're always going to have like lots of these spare weapons and things lying about. Um, 
so that there's always a bit of a downside to that but you know for anyone that just wanted to get three of these for instance um you know there is that option which is quite cool so there is that okay um now we pick the space marine uh there's a number of chess pieces actually uh for this one i uh, just want to see how this goes in right oh that's a tight fit It depends how good your glue is, but so thick that it splits it a little bit. But um, yeah, nice, uh, nice stand. I'd probably say that you know, putting this in and out all the time would would loosen it up. But yeah, just just keep an eye on that. You don't want it too loose. Um, right. So let's get this uh, Space Marine. Oh, you space marine. I'm so looking forward to that now. Um, 23 and 22. These ones, 23. And 22. Where's a 22? There we go. Ah, cast cast a ferrum dread. Thank you, thank you. Um, uh, I think if and when I do Titan, it will be mo most likely a reaver. Oh man, fog. That's the hardest one, man. That's the hardest one. I mean, if you do get one, like oh, my best advice is just take your time with it. Um, I see so many people just rush Titans, and it's so disheartening. Like, what what's the rush? I, I, do you have to use it in a game this weekend? I mean, you, you've just paid like £700 or $1,000 or something um, for this model and you're gluing it together as fast as, as Superman. Like, you, you don't need to do that. <laughs> just, just calm down. You can, um, you can take your time on this very expensive model that will last you absolute years. When did I build my, my Warlord Titan? What was it, 2015, 2016? Um, is, it, is, it coming to, is it coming up to like eight years old? It's still ticking, it's still good. Um, and all of that time I, I spent into it. Um, yeah, fantastic. Um, but yeah, if you could build a Reva, you could, you could build any Titan, pretty much, easy. Just don't glue the don't I say don't forget to buy a head. It, luckily it comes with a head for people that need to buy a head, but um don't glue the head, whatever you do. Leave the head open. You you pay for the detail. People want to see the detail. Uh, okay, so all of them have got one of these. And then we've got the back of his power armour. And then we've got a number of different chess pieces. One, two, three. We're just going to give him this one. Uh, no, we're going to have... Should we have him as the sergeant? Yeah, let's... Let's have him as the sergeant. So... Uh, I'm going to give him this chess piece. So that's that. Seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen for the heads. Let's have a look. Um, we'll give the sergeant this one. Good, good. Now that's really good to hear. Really, really good to hear. Um, I think Gaz and Michael. I think the the clear stands 
so the um you know the actual clear bases and the stands that slot in uh and then um models just rest on them or they've got that ball pivot joint they're the worst like you know they, they are awful these ones aren't too bad um because these ones don't s slot into anything um so they don't rattle around i mean you, you can glue them uh the the mold line isn't too bad on them compared to the previous ones and, and also the ball joint goes in quite firmly and you can move it around a bit i don't know whether you can move it around a bit more than the the previous clear stands but normally those those older clear stands didn't even have a ball joint so you could just like have your vehicle on there just standard um so i think there are worse stands out there um yeah paint painting a titan yeah for me it's all the oh nearly for me it's all the uh armor panels that's what gets me because there's like oh god how many uh one two three six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen there's like between 20 and 30 armor panels and the way I do mine it I spend ages there's a number of coats I, I put on them but the ball pivot ones you've broken a few on the Necron spiders okay but the Necron spiders don't come with those ones do they I can't think of many um uh, kits that come with with these new ones um, these haven't been around that long these particular ones uh, but I remember breaking a number of um, stands and pivot joints and things on the Eldar flyers like the Falcon and the Wave Serpent in the end, I think I just did an order to Games Workshop of about 20 um, flying base stands and things. This was ages and ages ago. Um, because I kept breaking so many in transit. Oh well. Let's have a little bit of clean up with these. Got a dual, 
particular part on the pollen. put these uh it's really strange that these are uh, sort of separate they look quite cool though it's almost like the uh inner calf i guess is um doesn't have as much armor on, like vented or something. I haven't really seen that on um, Mark Six before. Mark Six, yeah. Now you can kind of move the torso around a little bit. Your nearest games workshop's almost a three hour drive. Oof. Um give them a call, Gaz. Yeah, before you set off. Give them a call. Just double check. And hoping that they can um they can hold one for you at the store if they do have them. Uh, they are out of stock in a, in a few places. Um, I think I put that on uh, on the unboxing video, but I think in America they uh, they weren't out of stock. So I would always suggest you check check on your web store for your region and also check in your brick and mortar store. Right, that's the head and all those kind of things done. This needs to go on. There's even a cutout for this piece. I do like it when some of these uh, kits have a uh, totally brand new pieces that we, we haven't experienced before, even in, in resin. I think it's quite cool. Um, and then they're saying put his body on, come off you. They're saying put his legs, should I say, on there, just like that, sit him down. So that's what we're gonna do. So there's plenty of flat areas for, to do that. I mean, if you're a White Scars player, this is, this is gonna be heaven for you and Dark Angels player. A really cool model. Um, ah, now we've got the triggers. Trigger warning. 
uh, 16. Oh. They're not the triggers I was looking for. Oh, right. So this is to do jet bike one. What about jet bike two? Oh, right. So jet bike two has different triggers. So this is 28. And then you still need 16. I think, I kind of think this isn't labeled correct. Unless 16's on here, which it is. Wow. So it is correct. So that's 16. And then we're building the one with the chainsaw because why, why not? These are your options anyway. Yeah. <laughs> the Imperial Fist one looks nice. Um, so we want a 10 for the arm. That's kind of gone now. So we want a 10 for the arm. Is it a 10 though? Yes it is. So 10 for the left arm and 13 for the uh, chain sword. Well, we've got three 11s, ah, two 13s, here we go. So 13, and then we need a smooth, it's right up your street, a smooth pauldron. And then whatever this piece is, number five. Okay. So do they have power plants then? This is really bizarre. I don't think they have power plants. They're kind of plugged into their jet bike. How do they operate them when they get off their jet bike? Because they need the power plant for their powered armor. Can they just not get off their jet bikes? Hmm. Hmm. I think we found a plot hole. Right, we'll clean up these pieces, we'll put them on. Uh, we've got the head and everything sorted. Uh, and then it's pretty much it, really. Uh, I'm not gonna build all three, clearly. I, I aim to finish at 10. Uh, so I will have been here for two, two and a bit hours. Uh, but there will be a, uh, a video tomorrow, of course. There'll be videos all week. How about that? And the Angron review is coming soon. So is Horace Lupercal. Uh, uh, in a way, I was sort of hoping that the World Eaters stuff like the uh, Combat Patrol would come out quite soon to his release, but... Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen now. <laughs> um, good, Gaz. Yeah, no, that sounds cool. That's a good good way to go about it, yeah. Oh, okay, thanks, Christoph. Um, nice one, Shadow Sun. Nice one, yeah. That sounds good. Uh, yeah, definitely scavenge the um, uh, Volkart Serpentas. Uh, 
fused eternally with their bike. Once a biker, always a biker. Now that's the life. Uh, same with the vehicle crew. Ah, yeah, good point. Ah, yes. They would, wouldn't they? They'd have some armoury surfs or something, wouldn't they? Do, do all space marines have armoury surfs? Do all, they must do, right? They must stow their power plant somewhere. Um, maybe they can operate um, in their power armor for a certain amount of time. I, I, I remember reading one novel once where uh, a space marine, I think it was a Uriel Ventris novel. I'm sure it was where he had to, one space marine had to turn their power plant off kind of, to go, I say to go into stealth mode, you know, because they do make a bit of a, a bit of a hum, <laughs> um, and yeah, there there was an amount of time that they could operate in it, um, with their advanced biology or whatever before they superheated, because um, I, I think, or they could, or they switched off their vents. There was something about it, but they could operate for a little while. Um, I mean, it's it's not ideal, is it? You know, not having a power plant for your powered armor, but. Um. Oh, no worries, Fog. Thank you. Thanks for the chats. Really good. Um, yeah, the ammunition, yeah. Yeah, imagine, imagine if they jumped off the jet bikes and then they just got armour locked. <laughs> you know, like in, in games where you, your equip load is, is, your carry weight is too high. <laughs> imagine, just a space marine like leaping off and then... <laughs> Hello George, how are you doing? Uh, yeah, probably vent, yeah, probably the vent, turn off the vents, yeah. Ah, yep, yeah, good point. Sampler, yeah, they do have those um, power hoses, yeah. Uh, the plant lasts for a stupid amount of time. Uh, maybe they have a limited power cell to go with them. That's another good point. Yeah, they could be packing a power cell. Oh yeah, those power plants. Um, it's like a mini um, fusion reactor in them. They're, they're, they are actually a power plant in there. Um, yeah, they, they last for a very long time. Uh, I'm surprised they can't go kamikaze with them. Like, I'm surprised they can't... Uh, overheat them and then turn themselves into a, you know, blast template. <laughs> a bit like um, Titans can. I mean, uh, it, the blast won't be very, very big, but... Yeah, good point, good point. Yeah, it's almost like a, a short amount of time they can they can survive or operate for without without the power plant. Um, but typically, uh, they can they can operate for a, a very long time uh, with it. 
with it all equipped and then the only thing they need to really concern themselves is is ammunition uh, for the bolt guns All oh, right, okay. Interesting, George. Regular grounded bikers have packs. They do, yeah. Um, because I guess this jet bike has like a power plant in it. It must do. It must have something to, to power it. Um, and yeah, there probably is a small power plant in, in the Outrider bikes, things like that. But I don't think it's as powerful. Um, a bit like a tank, like some of the tanks, as, as we've already discussed, you know, have like a hose into the tank uh, to power them um, yeah yeah regular bikers they have their power plants don't they yeah very interesting topic though I don't know if anyone's ever brought it up before in um Land speeders as well, they don't have power plants. And I think in, like, obviously, like the Thunderhawk, um, they don't have a, uh, a power plant too, do they? Um, right, we are pretty much finished with this, uh, this guy. Uh, so this is the tricky bit. I always, I always found this a bit, a bit tricky. Uh, what we do is, let's see how well these, um, these go on. Firstly, I'd like to say they go on there. Oh, they are a bit, a bit, they're a bit dodgy the way they go on. Mm, I don't know whether I'd put these handles on before the main console. I probably would, you know, because they have, they've got an under, underneath attachment. Now this is always the, the fun part, where you glue the torso, and then you glue the arm, and then you glue the wrist. It's almost like a, a dance you have to perform with the three pieces. Don't know where that amount of glue got came from but because this glue takes ages to set as well needed a wrist to line up perfectly. Good. Happy with that. Um, oh, we need the chain sword. Number 24. Uh, right here, it's a nice looking chain sword. It would go well with um, White scars, tell you. Oh, we can also glue this little power plant thing in while we're here. 
Um, yeah, that just pops on there, apparently so. Um, Ah, oh, yeah, nice one, George. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also failing all of that power plant stuff. Um, I think Space Marines have like a mode where they just go into like a induced coma or whatever. Um, and then they can be reactivated if they're, if they're not. If they're floating in space, for instance, I think. Um, they can shut all of their systems down. On the one hand, it's like remarkable like how resilient they are, but also how I say how easy they are to kill. Like, like there's so many that that die in Horus Heresy. I know it's Space Marine on Space Marine, but they take so long to um, to create and to train, and even after all of that, yeah, they can be wiped out. Crazy. Okay, what we're going to do is we're actually going to glue the chain sword onto the wrist this time. Um, oh yeah, Terminator armor. Can you move in Terminator armor with the power plant going out? I don't know about that. Can have his chainsaw like that, I think. How about that, guys? That looks quite cool. And put splodger glue in there for the helmet. Uh, which side have they gone for the? Okay, so let's put this on. There. So yeah, this is where I'd use the thin glue. And then this guy is pretty much done. I mean, you can... Oh, there's a, there's a uh, sheath for the chainsword. Yeah, right here. Number 33. Oh, that's quite cool. And it's cool that they've... Uh, Ah, oh, they didn't need to do that, but they have. They've included a sheath for the chainsword, or a holder, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, definitely be putting that on there. And then you've got options, 29, 28. Uh, we'll go for... We'll go for this one. You can put any of these three, 27, 28, or 29 um, accessory packs, I guess. <laughs> Accessorize your jet bike. So yeah, we'll put these on and then that is him done. And we've built a jet bike, just two to go. Really enjoyed this kit. I, I kind of thought I would. Um, it's a decent kit. Uh, and another kit that I enjoyed, which I didn't think I would as much, is the Exalted. Um, yeah, I enjoyed building them. Uh, this week uh, so 
more than I thought I would. I'm currently building the Heldrake, but it's smaller than I than I thought. <laughs> a little bit of a preview there. Uh, why not use a Mark III helmet? Because it's Mark VI armor. Um, difference between uh, armor lock or armor underpowered. Uh, if the power goes out, what happens to the armor? Locks or just loses power? Um, if the power plant goes out under power armor, I think, I think if you're a sister, I think if you're an Adeptus Sororitas or Sisters of Battle, I think you are screwed. Like, you know, um, you haven't got the enhanced physiology and all of the organs and things like that uh, and the transplants, all, all those kind of things that would allow you to move in it without that power plant. But I think if you're a space marine, you've got all your, your extra lungs, your extra hearts, you know, the increased biology, things like that. And I think you, you can move in it, but... If, if you've got completely no power, it must have backup systems. So there's that. But if we're talking about no backup systems, no power, absolutely nothing, I think you can move in it, but you, you would be pretty slow. You'd be very, very slow. Uh, Terminator armor though, oof, I don't know about that. You know, I don't know. Armor lock. Well, we're talking about Halo now, aren't we? <laughs> I mean... I think you're completely out of luck in Terminator armor. Oh, those Gene Steelers, they're gonna... They're gonna rip you a new one. Gonna turn you into paste, aren't they? Oh, nice one, Michael. Nice one. I've not read Blood, uh, Blood of Iax, I don't think. So that's really cool. And this, um, yeah, I think there is like <laughs> small smidgen of glue in there. Yeah, that's that's gone, hasn't it? But this is probably one of the best ways of getting rid of the uh, the gaps here on your um, armor joint. Ah, uh, yeah, I have to pick it up. Thank you, Michael. Okay, so while that's doing its thing, we could have a little go at putting the accessory pack on, which doesn't go where you think it would. It, it goes on here. Or not. I mean, you don't have to put this on. This is purely optional. And unfortunately, there's no cutout there for it to attach. You know, like they, they put on some miniatures. Yeah, they, they tell you to put it on here. I guess this is a maglock point of contact there. But there's no cutouts on the back. So it's always going to be a bit a bit wonky, like you have just maglogged it, maglogged it, maglocked it. That's a bit of a shame. I might skip doing that because uh, well, I just might. However, the, the uh, sheath for this may go on there. 
honestly. Yeah, that's fine. That's not too obtrusive. Uh, okay, I'll put that on. Oh yeah, that's a that's a good call. I could have spare spare batteries in them pouches. Yeah, that's a good call. I think that's fine having it like that. It's not too too obtrusive that way um for model's sake let's let's put this on um let's just yeah let's just put this on let's get it over with even though i'm not a big fan of just plonking a piece like that on it's fine though not too bad. Um, and then I will actually finally glue this back end um, on there too. Like that. So. And then this is the final piece. We can let's just put that on. To well, what I like to do with my bases anyway is um, paint them. So I'll paint over this, uh, this clear clear plastic stand. Got to get the uh, position right though. That works, it's fine. Uh, does the Imperium 40K still have jet bikes? Um, yeah, custodies. Do they have them in the Imperial Armour book? I think so. I'd have to run and get it for you, but I think you could have scimitar jet bikes. Very rare. I mean, obviously, I don't know of many uh, grav rhinos, <laughs> flying rhinos, but this is the loadout I'm going to have, by the way. I will magnetise um, once I get some magnets. I probably do have the right amount of magnets, but yeah, these uh, bad boys are going to have the plasma cannons. Um, I'm so tempted to glue that, though. <laughs> you don't know how tempted I am just to glue that plasma cannon in. Um, but I built one, which is my goal for tonight. It wasn't gonna be a huge stream, but then again, you know, um, I wanted to do a stream tonight. Uh, there will be another stream next week. Um, I'll try and get one out Wednesday. I always say this, but I end up, you know, doing exercise or um, being busy in the evening rather than um, doing a live stream for you guys. Uh, but I will try. Um, yeah, and that's that's it pretty much. So uh, yeah, um, oh, that's the extra piece as well. I'll keep that safe. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna end it there, guys. Um, but thank you um, for for joining me this evening, and um, hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. But thank you uh, so much for all your questions today. Um, all right, well, thanks again. You take care, everyone, and. Uh, the Emperor protects.